Um, last game, championship performances. Guys with throw play offense, uh, Mitchell Page, uh, outstanding game, nine catches, 101 yards. Uh, had some strong effort, uh, but we didn't think the performance was quite up to speed. But Coy Cronk and Brandon Knight up front played hard. Need to play better. West Martin as well. Danny Frem did have a critical holding call. Thought Divine battled. Got to clean up a protection issue he had, and Xander came in with some spunk. But Mitchell's the only one we recognize with the, with the championship level play. Defensively, several guys. Our front was really good. Our second team's got to pick it up a little bit, but Dockerty was very strong. Ralph Green, very productive. Nate Hoff and, and Greg Gooch, those four were recognized with championship performances. Uh, Marcus Oliver, a linebacker, and then our three safeties. Uh, with Crawford, Marcelino Ball, and Chase Dutra. I uh, had some good uh, work in the kick game. The sky punt that got so down led to some point production after the block by Dutra. T. Gray Scales with a couple tackles and Mitchell Page. So we did really well in the punt game. Our punt return team uh, accounted for nine points potentially with the, with the block safety and the, and the good return stuff at the short field. Uh, the sky punt that we downed led to points. That was good to get. Kickoff cover, Donovan Hale's coming on, looking good, growing as a player, and Chris Covington's really coming on. It's good to see. Uh, players of the game, offensively, was Mitchell Page. Uh, defensively, John Crawford, uh, very productive. Uh, one interception, pass breakups, very good. Special team player, Chase Dutra. He's been that a couple times and doing well, playing uh, splitting time at safety as a veteran, but doing great in a special team. Uh, Xander Diamant, Alex Rodriguez, Taysir Mack were our offensive scouts, and Kenny Arnold, defensive scout. Those guys get recognized a lot. Xander played some quarterback in the game for us, but basically the last two weeks has been our scout team guy running around. I'll probably get a lot of the same look this week with, North, with Northwestern's uh, quarterback, so he's doing great. It's great to see. He's been one of our best teammates. Uh, offensively, issues, again, score zone opportunities. We keep missing a pick six. We've lost two games where we lose by less than a touchdown. We have a pick six and two of the three losses. Went three and out or three and a field goal after turnovers. Didn't take advantage of uh, defensive uh, turnover play. And really just the lack of, the com of competitive plays. The really only one-on-one -on -one real good competitive play was Ricky Jones on the go ball uh, right before our last touchdown. So, you know, we're making some plays. We need more competitive plays, whether it be a uh, competitive blitz pickup, a shot, a catch, a run. Same thing defensively. You know, really playing well, but again, chance to make a competitive play when the game's on the line. has got to pick up. Uh, defensively, uh, we gave up the big plays. Uh, some of them may be misfortunate, but two big plays. Long drive at the end, you know, 14-play drive. They hadn't had a really long drive since the first quarter. I think they had 210 yards offense going into the fourth quarter and, uh, and really played well after the first quarter. I think second, third quarter really deed them up well. They had the one long play, but then they come off of that with the, with the fourth quarter uh, long drive. They had 10 points in the fourth quarter. I think, again, Coach Allen will talk about, in his opinion, just critical execution and crunch time. And we just have a few busts, not as clean as we need to be. A couple things have been there, just game on the line, just need to be a little bit sharper. Uh, good challenge this week. Again, good opponent the last week, but another good one this week. Northwestern um, tailback leads the conference in rushing. Young man that we recruited very hard, very, very proven player, uh, very good runner. Had 180-some yards and 34 carries against Michigan State uh, last week. Their wide receiver, Austin Carr, leads the Big Ten in receiving. So they got the number one runner, number one receiver. Uh, he's playing outstanding. He's the uh, first guy since Teddy Johnson to score five touchdowns in a, in a row in five straight games. That was back on the 2000 team. I was there. It was a hot team. This team's playing really good offense the last couple weeks. 38 on the road at Iowa and 54 at Michigan State. Don't happen a whole lot. That's, that's good football. Quarterback Clayton Thorson won 10 games last year as a redshirt freshman. You can really see him growing and settling in. Can can move around with his feet, but really throwing it clean. They're running the ball last couple games that were 400 yards and holding the opponent down. But Clayton's throwing for a couple hundred, putting 500 yards on Michigan State at Michigan State and 54 points. I think is the most ever in, in, in Michigan State Stadium. So uh, playing good. Again, they've won at Iowa, at Michigan State, and they beat Duke. And we know having played all those teams, how hard those victories are, because those are teams that we've struggled against. They're two and one in the Big Ten, in the Big Ten West, and they have a chance to continue to, to move forward there. Uh, defensively, uh, have been very solid for years under Coach Hankowitz. Pat Fitzgerald himself is a former great defensive player. So they put together a team very, very well. Uh, don't give up the big play. Uh, really good at linebacker, 
outstanding safety, big in the defensive line, big and strong. So good defense. 95-yard uh, kickoff return last game, 47-yard punt return against uh, Iowa. So good in the kicking game. Matter of fact, I, I believe after the Iowa game, they gave up some returns. And looking at the videotape, it looked like they had complete new punt team and complete new kickoff cover team. Play a lot of their defensive starters uh, last week uh, in their win at Michigan State. Uh, we know the team well. We've got a lot of respect for those guys, know the school. So for our coach, Coach Watson was there with Coach Barnett. Myself and Co Coach Johns and Coach Patton followed that crowd. So we know the school, we know their coaches, got a lot of dear friends, a lot of people we respect and love up there. It's a, it's a great program. Uh, it's a program that's came a long way. It'll be a tough road win, something we don't have a lot of here. And, and Big Ten wins we don't have a lot of. So it's going to be a tough challenge. We're coming off a good stretch of games. We're going to need a better week. Uh, to have a chance to go play well against this team because they're playing good. Had off to a good start. Came in yesterday, made our corrections. Had a good start here today, but we're going to need a good week uh, playing a, a noon kick, 11 central time up there. So good challenge, but ready to keep moving forward in the Big Ten play. Disappointed to be one and two, but ready to keep moving forward. A few offensive line guys there kind of talking about last weekend's performances. Guys, I think you said – Played hard, just maybe weren't the execution wasn't always there. Is it? Is it just a matter for those guys? Not so much of effort as it is cleaning up. A lot, really, the offense is just a lack of not being as clean a team. Because I think you got three receivers in the top twelve in the conference. Running backs, I think six now rushing. Quarterback second. So you got you got some guys that are individually being productive, but it's playing as a group, and that's what we're talking about. It's putting together as a team. And I think individually, we've actually had some individual defense that haven't been bad that hadn't played together as a team. They're playing better team defense. They're playing collectively as a group, and I think our offense is a little fragmented right now, not by design. Uh, I think it starts with me uh, and our coaches to get that corrected and to, to get those guys centered up and get lasered back in. So there's a lot of things to work with. Uh, we've had a few little issues with, with some bumps and bruises and guys that can't go, but that's, everybody has that. You know, guys got to come in and play. Uh, and, again, you just look at, at the numbers do not correlate to points. So that's play calling. That's also executing the play that's called as a group. And um, like I say, in these last two games, Northwestern, I think, has 10 sacks against Iowa and Michigan State. I think they're, they're, they've had seven turnovers in their three victories that they've created. And so our ability as an offensive play as a group to eliminate the negative play, which is played, I think, in our, uh, in our three losses, we have nine turnovers. And we have 11 for the season, I believe. So, I mean, there's things there's just – it's not very secretive of what wins. You're not going to be perfect, but we need to be better. And like I say, we've got some uh, – those young tackles played hard. West Martin played hard. We got some seniors playing. You know, I don't know if Feeney goes this week. He's doing more in each every, every day. We'll see if Dan gets back. Okay, uh, Ian, Ian Thomas played his best at tight end last week. That position always helps the line. And Ian coming on, helping Danny will help us with some tight end play. Um, but again, to me, our offense is just a little. There's no egos or selfishness. We're just a little, uh, just a little out of whack, and we're talking about tight it up. And, you got, you got to play as one unit. Right now, we got a lot of individual talent. Just gets a little out of sync. We're just misfiring. We'll see if we can clean it up. We've also played some really good defenses, FYI. You know, I saw Wake Forest Hill, Florida State, 17-6, and Tallahassee. I mean, played some pretty good defenses, so you got to give credit to those guys. We, we keep attacking it, and we're going to keep pointing thumbs at what we can correct. But we've been challenged. And we'll be challenged. Northwestern's really, really good. We're going to be challenged hard this week. Yes, you need some of those linemen in particular maybe to – Phrase is find their voice or, or what it might be just because all of a sudden they're they're playing a lot more they're kind of regular first team guys with some of the injuries you've had and they need to what just kind of I don't know find their voice or confidence or, or maybe yeah um, I, I mean to me I mean I mean you watch Coy Crunk play now and he's out there playing against uh, you know small school high school kid playing high end ball and he's not giving up I me mean, he's battling now so I mean I mean like I say we're just you, you're never that good when you're good. You're never that bad when you're all bad. We're just a little bit off. And um, there's a lot of things in place to work with. And we'll see if we can, like I say, collectively get them centered up and focused up and get an attack and right. But, uh, again, when you're making those plays, there are guys blocking. When you're throwing bubble passes, we had a bubble pass the other day. It was one of those critical fourth downs. We didn't go on second down. We had a receiver just sit there and not block it. Guy and got us into third and two or three when it should have been a first down. And so it's just, you know, when you, when you play as a group, uh, we had a pick because one of our receivers didn't think the guy was going to go out, so he kind of slowed down, muddied the water. That was the pick six. And he was thinking too much instead of playing fast. So I think the group's pressing a little bit, you know, and we're just talking about there's some end of it. You know, when you don't have players to work with, you got problems. 
and we got some players. We just got to clean it up. We're going to work hard, like I say, to correct what's correctable. Bottom line to me, it's just getting our guys. It's, it's cleaning up some play calling, uh, making sure that we know what we're doing, a little bit more sound, understanding, um, so we can play harder. We're playing hard. Just got to keep playing better. They had struggled offensively early in the season. Now they pick it up. Um, maybe what's the key to that in particular? Is it just that the court they're getting better quarterback play? Is that well? The Lions playing better. I think they, you know, they've been patient. Got the running game going with the running game. Uh, the car kid come on receivers been awesome, but a couple of the receivers. Got a young freshman from in-state here whose dad played here. Skronik's a really good player from Fort Wayne area. Uh, so I mean, they they they, they collectively they like, like us. They weathered their storms. They were a little out of whack. But I, I think, you know, they, they went in, coached what they needed to coach, cleaned it up, and they've played really, really well the last few weeks. And I think they're playing good team ball. Defense is complimenting the offense. They're getting sacks. They're getting turnovers. They're not giving up plays. Uh, they played really well against Nebraska. It's a 24-13 game. Uh, so in their last four games, they got three victories and a, and a close loss to a really good team. So, but they, they've, they've weathered their storm offensively, and they've played really well the last two weeks, especially well, the last two road games, really well on the road at Iowa and at Michigan State. Those are good victories. And how would you evaluate Rich and just the way the, the job he's done? He's doing, uh, well, you know, I think well. The, um, again, the, 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 the one pick the other day, uh, he, he sees what's going on and tries to back shoulder one. Really, the receiver's got to space out of, uh, you know, play. I'd still like for him to continue to be more confident, uh, stronger. He's gaining on it, you know. Um, he's had good practices. I'm good. Thank you. He, he's had... Um, he said, you know, he's practiced well. He's working at it hard. Um, you know, we got a few more turnovers than we'd like to have. But there's not a lot of times where, you know, he missed the last one high as protection's breaking. We got to clean. We got to continue to clean up protection. We got to get our, as, you know, you can throw it much better when your run game's going. The last couple, three weeks, we've had some tough sledding and running the ball for about four weeks. And that being said, you know, you're throwing behind chains and you're getting long yardages. That skews your numbers a little bit. No, a play's being called, and sometimes, you know, again, because of what we're doing, you can just always, I think, maybe get more offense than you need and just hard getting rhythm, hard practicing it. How many times you've done it, hey, you know what to do, but does the kid know what to do? And does he know what to do with all the formations that you have, all the coverages, like in Rich's situation, all the coverages you're dealing with, or with Coy Crunk and Brandon Knight, you got first-time starters at tackles, all the blitz looks and edge pressures. And by the time you put all those variables together, they don't get a lot of the same looks over and over and over and over. And so if you simplify, you get too easy. If you want to get cute and coach too much, you can complicate it for your kids. And there's a balance that we got to get where, you know, we're keeping the defense off guard uh, and not just run past, but there's, there's tendencies you have in formations and down in distances. But as you try to balance yourself, do your kids know what they're doing? And so it's just, to me, it's uh, we've just tried to look at, at, at what do you need this week and what are we good at, what's Rich good at, but we also just don't want to be bland in what we're doing. You also mentioned on Saturday that uh, Griffin's dealing with a little bit of a leg issue uh, and had kind of limited range. Just curious why he was then still kicking off as well. Well, uh, well, we had an issue with one kicker, and so he's the best one. You know, and um, he, he had a couple money kicks at the end of the win when the game's on the line. In fact, one of them popped out to about the 20. He pinned the guy down on the two-yard line all the way in the corner like we liked it, and those were, those were huge kicks. You know, the 45-yarder, but again, before, I mean, he's, I think he overkicked a couple weeks ago as he was trying to work through his issues and just kind of irritate his leg. And, 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 and we've tried to modify some of his practice. I think we're, what, uh, 8 of 12 in field goals, 2 out of 3. And so we've been a little bit off. Um, and we were, we were close to being in range a couple times. Just felt we wanted to go for it and didn't. But uh, no guarantee we'd have made the kick. But, did, you know, but he's, uh, he, he really came out of the game, I think, feeling better. This will be an interesting game for him. It's the only game this year we got on the grass. You know, we're so much used to turf. Of course, we'll be on the, he's been on the grass kicking for several weeks, getting ready for it. But sometimes uh, you, you can make that a little bit more of a mental case than you need to be. But he, he came out good. He's got a good look about him. He looks a little bit more like himself. We'll see if we can get him, we'll keep him going. With Xander this weekend, how much of that was pre-planned? How much of it was kind of something you guys felt like you needed to introduce in-game? And yeah, we, we had talked about in some running situations that, to have him ready to go in and practice it. Um, and it just presented itself, and it worked a couple, and we wrote it a few times. We also threw it, you know, overshot a play action post where he needed to squeeze it. Protection was blaking down. Matter of fact, that running back missed uh, after the play fake a backer, but he overshot a shot to Mitchell. I think he hit several bubble passes. 
You know, I think he threw the ball seven times. He's not a wildcat guy, but he is a guy that can run a little. And we thought, you know, in some of those situations, it would help. You know, so it was kind of we. I we didn't say, hey, we're doing it here. It was just, you know, if we thought we needed it, it was ready to go. He came in and did well. Coach, uh, T. Gray is right at the top of the league right now, and, and T. Gray scales right at the top of the league in, in tackles. How much of that is the four-two-five, or how much of it is maybe him starting to become like an off-conference level? I'd say both. I, go ahead. Okay. Is there anything else? No, I just no, just just you know his, his fourth straight game I think with double digits and tackles more. Yeah. Um, and Coach, I'll tell you, wish or Coach Inch too would probably say the wish is less. That means you get less plays, and you know it's kind of like when when uh, our kicker's kicking all the field goals last year. You wish you were scoring more touchdowns. You know, so I, I think they'd want those tackles to be fewer. Because you're on the field less, you're getting more stops, and the offense is keeping the ball and keeping our defense off the field. But I'd say one, he is, he's definitely grown. He's in his third year. Uh, but I think also it's, it's a part part of the structure of, of where I think both he, our Mike Backer, um, and our and our couple of safeties, Crawford and and, and Marcelino Ball, they're always going to be a focal point of where balls get bounced to them. And and uh, so a credit to – it's a little bit of the schemes, a little bit of the nature of the position. Linebackers and, and safeties always have a lot of hits. Uh, but all that, that whole crowd, except for Marcelino and, and Aishon being freshmen that are talented, the whole group in general has grown. It's matured. Crawford's more steady and more self-assured and confident. Tony Fields and Dutra are gaining on it. We're getting really good play out of Fant. Uh, Marcus Oliver's been rock solid. T. Gray's been the best of them. That's a credit to him. Um, credit to the scheme. I think it's also a credit to Coach Allen and – holding the standard and pushing him. And I think uh, Tom and, and Bill would say they'd want him to do better too. And we kind of share with our defense, uh, much like we shared uh, with our offense a year ago, if you think you're doing good, it's not good enough. Because you got to do what it takes to win. And you're doing better. And we see it. And we're proud of it. But it's gonna have to, you're gonna have to get, we, need it, we need it at stop at the end of the game as well as you're doing. And because you consider like, you know, we never, offense never blamed the defense. Defense is not going to blame if the offense is off. You got to do what it takes to win. And I think that's the, 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 the mantra and the, and the chemistry of the team we're trying to get. We're doing good, and we just want everything to keep getting better. So the offense has a lot of things to clean up, but I know the defense feels the same way, and, uh, and it's good to see. With the yeah. red zone struggles, is there any thought of getting the tight end more involved down there? What's that now? With the red zone struggles, is there any thought of getting the tight end more Well, with Fuchs being injured, it takes a little bit out with some of the passing that you had. Ian Thomas really played his best game. You know, he missed the bulk of summer, you know, getting his grade straight. So he's kind of now, you know, no different than uh, years ago when Stephen Houston started and Timmy Bennett started. And they missed the summer and they show up. It takes about to October to get you ready. You need a couple months. And they missed kind of June and July. So Ian came on, helps. Uh, Doris has been a little uh, inconsistent. And, you know, so and, and, and Danny does well. But he's a little bit more of a big block guy. We've used him a little. So there's some of that. But no matter what you do, they can always put one more. You still got to, I would say as much as anything, we talked about the competitive plays. And when you get in the scoring zone, a lot of times it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's a competitive play. You got to make it, and we got to make more. Now, whether it be one tight end, two tight ends, no tight ends, run or pass, we got to make competitive plays to score. Uh, it seems like he's been getting maybe progressively more work. And you know, we saw Cam Young draw the pass interference this weekend. I guess is he starting to get that sharpness, not necessarily the help, but maybe the, the game speed? Yeah, you know, at the same time, he's – He's coming off an ACL that was operated on April the 14th. So he's six months and what's today? What's today? 17th? So he's six months and three days off of ACL surgery, where they typically they clear you to start jogging at six months. So he's kind of a, you know, he's way, he's, 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 he's one of the few medical guys we had that's ahead of schedule and coming back good. So, I mean, he's kind of like, you know, just, you know, he's a very talented kid. It's still, it's still you know, self-confidence. It's, it's physical strength. He's gaining on it. Had a good go today. Had a few glitches today. He's got to clean up, but he's gaining on it. We'll keep, but we got to keep bringing. It. I really was was impressed the way Donovan Hill played last week and kick cover and starting to really come on and play fast and not be so timid and tentative. And as a young player, that'll help him be a better receiver. He had a nice catch. He ran out of bounds. Thornton had a bubble pass. We got to keep all those guys coming along. But Camion's doing good. But now, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, most guys would still be in in, you know, not even practicing yet. You know, so he's way ahead of schedule. And it's, imp it's impressive, to tell you the truth. Credit to him and, and, and the medical guys there. Anything? You got your purple on. Is that purple? It's blue. What? It's blue. It's pure purple. Huh? <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, Northwestern allows the most uh, passing yards per game in the conference. Is that an area that you maybe look to exploit, or are you still, you know, would you prefer to kind of establish a balance? If we can have balance, it's always easier. You know what I mean? And, and, they're, and they, like our other opponents recently, you know, they're very good at linebacker. They're very stout up front. Those safeties and backer fits are extra hats. That's hard. And so if you're just going to come out and wing it and you get one, that's the nature of what they do. They want to get you one-dimensional. And you can say they're, that they're, they're last in those stats, but they're two and one playing a, playing a pretty good conference schedule today. I mean, you know, you know, you know Nebraska at home and at Iowa and at Michigan State. So part of it's their formula. And, and for us, our offense has always been best when there's a run game. And their offense up there has gotten going on because they've gotten their run game going. And with that now, they're, they're, they're a little bit more complete animal. So it's going to be, it's going to be hard. We've got to find a way to find it. And we'll work hard, too, and it's going to be a challenge. And it will the next week. You know, the really good defenses and really good teams make it hard to run, and the really good teams can still find a way to get it running. Injury question, but I guess, Dimitri, is there kind of any feel for whether or not you'd be able to get him back late in the season? I don't know where you Yeah, I think most of those guys would be at best bowl, and then from there you just look at, you know, and I mean, it's a long time off. You know, with, with Fuchs and Simi and him, and, you know, all those injuries are, I mean, it's just, I don't think we'll know that till we got to be a boat. We got to get, we got to worry about this week. Those are weeks away. And we've talked to him. He's got his plan about where he gets to. We'll see if things materialize. Everybody good? Big challenge. That is a purple shirt over there, right? I still think it's blue. Huh? It looks a little blue. blue. I'm a little colorblind here. Is that, is that a cubby blue? It's like a, it's like a deep blue. Is that Cubs? Yeah, South side or north side? North side. Huh? North side. All right. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Thanks.